Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining us. all doing well. This is the Old Testament in eight days, and we're on day 36. And today will be 1 Kings 8 through... Sorry, because these are kind of long. Well, at least this first chapter is a little long. It's okay. So, 1 Kings 8, verse 1. And Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh out of the city of David, which is in Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Solomon at the feast of the month Benim, which is the seventh month, and all the elders of Israel came, and the priests took up the Ark. They brought up the Ark of Yahweh in the tabernacle of the congregation, and the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle, even those the priests, the Levites, did bring. King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled in him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen, old nor numbered for multitude. And the priests brought up the ark of the covenant of Yahweh into his place, into the oracle of the house to the most holy place, even unto the wings of the cherubims. For the cherubims spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen out of the holy place before the oracle. And they were not seen without, and there they are unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone, which Moses put there at Horeb, when Yahweh made a covenant with the children of Israel, and they came out to the land of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of Yahweh, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of Yahweh has, had filled the house of Yahweh. Then spake Solomon, Yahweh said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have surely built thee a house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. And the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of Israel, and all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be he, be Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, which spake with his mouth unto David my father, and hath with his hand fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house, that my name might be therein. But I chose David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David my father to build a house from the Yahweh Elohim of Israel. And Yahweh said unto David my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build a house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless thou shalt not build the house, but thy son shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. And Yahweh had performed his word that he spake, and am risen up in the room of David my father, sit on the throne of Israel, as Yahweh had promised, and have built a house for the name of Yahweh Elohim of Israel. I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of Yahweh which he made with our fathers when he brought them out to the land of Egypt. Solomon stood before the altar of Yahweh in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. He said, Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, there is no Elohim like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Who hast kept with thy servant David my father that thou promised him, thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Therefore now, Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, keep with thy servant David my father that thou promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O Elohim of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David my father. Will Elohim indeed dwell on the earth? And behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, how much less this house that I have builded. Yet have I 
have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and unto his supplication, O Yahweh, my Elohim, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee today. That thine eyes may be open toward this house, night and day, even toward the place of what which thou hast said, My name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward his place. And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, when they shall pray toward this place, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, when thou hearest forgive. If any man trespass against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear, and the oath come before thine altar in this house, then hear thou in heaven and do, and judge thy servants, condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head, and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee to confess thy name, and pray and make supplication unto thee house then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers when heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them and hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance there be in the land famine if there be pestilence blasting mildew locusts or if there be caterpillar if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities whatsoever plague whatsoever sickness there be but prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people israel which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hand toward his house. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do. Give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. Thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. That they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, they shall hear of thy great name, and stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to hear thee as do thy people Israel, and that they know oh, that it, this house which I have builded is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, their silver thou shalt send them, and shalt pray unto Yahweh toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for thy name. And hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, maintain their cause. Sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them into thy, the enemy, so that they carry them away captives into the land of an enemy, far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were capti carried captives, and repent, and make supplication to thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. Wow, this is like predicting exactly what's going to happen. It's crazy. And so unto thee, with all their hearts and with all their soul, in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven and thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carry them captive, that they may have compassion on them. They be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron. That thine eyes may be open unto thy supplication of thy servant, and unto the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them and all that they call for unto thee. 
For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord Elohim. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto Yahweh, he arose from before the altar of Yahweh, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread to he up to heaven. He stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be Yahweh that hath given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise, which he had promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Yahweh, our Elohim, be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. That he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways to, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers. And let these words wherewith I have made supplication before Yahweh be nigh unto Yahweh, our Elohim, day and night, that he may maintain the cause of his servant in the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require. And all the people of the earth may know that Yahweh is Elohim, and that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with Yahweh our Elohim, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments at, as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before Yahweh, and Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto Yahweh two hundred and twenty thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of Yahweh. Same day did the king hollow the middle of the court that was before the house of Yahweh. There he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. Because the brazen altar that was before Yahweh was too little to receive the burnt offerings and the meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a feast, and all Israel with him, a great congregation from the entering of in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt, before Yahweh our Elohim seven days and seven days, even fourteen days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king, and went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that Yahweh hath done for David his servant, and for Israel his people. First Kings 9 and it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of Yahweh and the king's house and all, and all Solomon's desire which he was pleased to do, that Yahweh appeared to Solomon the second time as he appeared unto him at Gibeon. And Yahweh said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me, and I have hallowed this house which thou hast built. I put my name there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and wilt keep my statutes and my judgments, and I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, I will not keep my commandments, and my statues which I have said before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out before my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house which is high, every one that passeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss. And they shall say, Why hath Yahweh done thus unto this land and to this house? They shall answer, Because they forsook Yahweh their Elohim, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, taken hold upon other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath Yahweh brought upon them all this evil. And it came to pass at the end of twenty years, when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of Yahweh and the king's house. Now Hiram the king of Tyre had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees, and with gold according to all his desire. That then King Solomon gave Haram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. Haram came out from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him, and they pleased him not. And he said, What cities are these that thou hast given me, my brother? And he called them the land of Kabul unto this day. And Haram sent to the king six score talents of gold. And this is the reason of the levy which King Solomon raised, for to build the house of Yahweh. 
and his own house, and Milo, and the wall of Jerusalem, and Hazor, and Megiddo, and Gezer. For Pharaoh king Egypt had gone up, and taken Gezer, and burnt it with fire, and slain the Canaanites that dwelt in the city, and given it for a present to his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon built Gezer, and Beth Horon, the nether, and Baalath, and Tab Tadmor, in the wilderness, in the land. And all the cities of the store that Solomon had, and cities for his chariots, and cities for his horsemen, and that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. And all the people that were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Pezrites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel, their children that were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel also were not able to utterly uh, destroy upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto this day. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen. But they were men of war in his servants, and his princes, and his captives, and his rulers, and his chariots, and his horsemen. These were the chief of the officers that were over Solomon's work, five hundred and fifty which bear rule over the people that wrought in the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David unto her house which Solomon had built for her. Then did he build Milo. And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar which he built unto Yahweh, and he burnt incense upon the altar that was before Yahweh. So he finished the house. And King Solomon made made a navy of ships in Ezon Geber, which is beside Eloth, on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. And Hiram sent the navy, his servants, shipmen that had knowledge of sea, and with the servants of Solomon. And they came to Ophir and fetched from thence gold four hundred and twenty towns and brought it to King Solomon. First Kings 10 when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of Yahweh, she came to prove him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. And when the Queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of Yahweh, there was no more spirit in her. She said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land that thy acts and of thy will. Albeit I believed not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be Yahweh, thy Elohim, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because Yahweh loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. He gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices of very great store and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these which the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. And the navy also of Haram that brought gold from Ophir brought in from Ophir great plenty of almug trees and precious stones. And the king made of the almug trees pillars for the house of Yahweh and for the king's house harps also and psalteries for singers. There came no such almug trees, nor were seen unto this day. King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. Said that he had of the merchantmen, and of the traffic of the spice merchants, and of the kings of Arabia, and of the governors of the country. King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold, six hundred shekels of gold went to one target, and he made three hundred shields of beaten gold, three pound of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were 
stays on either side of the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the stays. The twelve lions stood over there on the one side, and the other upon the six steps there was not the like made in any kingdom. And all the kingdom, and all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forced Lebanon were of pure gold, none were of silver, it was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king had at sea a navy of Tarshish with the navy of Haram. Once in three years came the navy of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver and ivory and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which Elohim had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present vessels of silver, vessels of gold, garments and armor and spices, horse and mules, at rate, year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots, and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones and cedars, made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver and a horse for a hundred and fifty. And so for all the kings of the Hittites and for the kings of Syria did they bring them out by their means. First Kings 11 but King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which Yahweh said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn you away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these. He had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines and his wives turned away his heart for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with Yahweh for his his Elohim as was the heart of David his father Solomon went after Ashtoreth the goddess of the Zidonians and after Milcom the abomination of the Amor Ammonites and Solomon did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and went not fully after Yahweh, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, and the, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And Yahweh was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from Yahweh. Israel, which had appeared in him twice, and he commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which Yahweh commanded. Wherefore Yahweh said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Yet I will not rend away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Yahweh stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, he was of the king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass, when David was in Edom, and Joab, the captain of the host, was gone up to bury the slain after he had smitten every male in Edom. For six months did Joab remain there with all the Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom. At Hadad fled and certain Edomites of the father's servant with him to go into Egypt, Hadad being yet a little child. And they rose out to Midian and came to Paran, and they took men with them out to Paran, and they came to Egypt unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, which gave him a house and appointed him victuals and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him to wife the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tephenis the queen. The sister of Tephenis bare him Genubath, his son, whom Tephenis weaned in Pharaoh's house, and Genubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the captain of the host, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, 
Let me depart that I may go to mine own country. Pharaoh said unto him, But what hast thou lacked with me, that, behold, thou seekest to go to thine own country? And he answered, Nothing, howbeit let me go in any wise. And Elohim stirred him up another adversary, Rezon the son of Eliadah, which fled from his lord Hadadezer, the king of Zoabah. And he gathered men unto him, and became captain over a band, when David slew them of Zobah. And they went to Damascus, and dwelt therein, and reigned in Damascus. And he was an adversary of Israel all the days of Solomon, beside the mischief that Hadad did. And he abhorred Israel, and reigned over Syria. And Jeroboam the son of Nebat, Ephrathite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose mother name was Zerah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David his father. And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. Solomon seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the fields. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him, and rent, him, rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, but thus saith Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out from the hand of Solomon, and I will give it, and I will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because that they have forsaken me, and have worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways, to do that which is right to mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Albeit, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince in all the days of his life for David, my servant's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David, my servant, may have light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desireth, and shalt be king over Israel. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, that I will be with thee, and build thee a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, and to Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. And the rest of the Acts of Solomon, and all that he did in his wisdom, are they not written in the books of the Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. It's interesting that uh, Solomon reigned for forty years, just like uh, King David did. Uh, King David was his total time was uh, 40 years too as his name was Solomon but it is um, it's a shame that Solomon turned from serving the Lord in his old age and worshipped other gods uh, it's just sad he was, he was doing so well messed up so great Another interesting thing is this right here, the book of the Acts of Solomon. Supposedly, it's another book that they took out of the Bible. But, you know, that's that's a hot debate right there. Some people think that these lost books are books they took out on purpose. 
out of the Bible. Some think that you know, it wasn't inspired by God, and that's why they're not in the Bible. It's a whole back and forth thing, so it's up to you to have discernment if you want to read those books or not. But always pray for discernment, sort of things. Um, yeah. First Kings 12. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. But they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous, now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father, and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. And he said to them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father, while he yet lived, and said, How do you advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What is the counsel give ye that we may answer this people, who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us slider? The young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father delayed you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke my father, which hath chastened you with whips, but I will chasten you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king hath appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. The king answered the people roughly, and forsook the old man's counsel that they gave him. Spake to them after the counsel of the young man, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastened you with whips, but I will chasten you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for this cause was from Yahweh, that he might perform his saying, which Yahweh spake by Ahijah the Shilonite, unto Jeroboam the son of Nebet. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, all the people answered the king, saying, what portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse to your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Therefore King Rehoboam made speech to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation, and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred and four score thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel and uh, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the sons of Solomon. But the word of Elohim came unto Shemaiah, the man of Elohim, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearkened therefore to the word of Yahweh, and returned to depart according to the word of Yahweh. Then Jeroboam built Shechem and Mount Ephraim, and dwelt therein, and went out from thence, and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of Yahweh at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah. And they shall kill me, and do and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel, and made two calves of gold, and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin 
for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan, and he made a house of high places, and made a priest of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. And he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. So here's where it starts. Actually, it all started with um, Solomon when he when he started praying to other gods, strange gods. Uh, that's where it st all started. But then his son Rehoboam is just a spiral, a spiral into just wickedness for the rest of the time until they up until they go to into exile into Babylon sad it's sad reading this really because you see all these people and see their mistakes and their sins and it just reminds you how wicked we all are but also how sad it is that people had uh, people in those days they actually got to see the works of the Lord they actually got to um, witness it and like with King Solomon he got to actually speak with the Lord directly two times and they still you know went away from their sin it's it's just that anyway first Kings 13 will continue and behold there came a man of Elohim out of Judah by the word of Yahweh into Bethel and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense and he cried against the altar and the word of Yahweh and said altar o, o altar altar thus saith Yahweh Behold, the child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee he shall offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee. And the men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which Yahweh hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. In a past when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of Elohim, which had cried against all the the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand which he put forth against him dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar was also also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of Elohim had given by the word of Yahweh. And the king answered and said unto the man of Elohim, Entreat now the face of Yahweh, the Elohim, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. And the man of Elohim besought Yahweh, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of Elohim, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. The man of Elohim said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. So it was charged me by the word of Yahweh, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of Elohim had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of Elohim went, which came from Judah. And he said to his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. And went after the man of Elohim, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of Elohim that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. He said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of Yahweh, Thou shalt not eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. An angel spake unto me by the word of Yahweh, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. 
So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of Yahweh came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of Elohim that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of Yahweh, and hast not kept the commandment which Yahweh that Elohim commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in this place of the, the which Yahweh did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet to whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, the men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it into the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of Elohim who was disobedient unto the word of Yahweh. Therefore Yahweh hath delivered him unto the lion, which had torn him and slain him, according to the word of Yahweh, which he spake unto him. And he spake unto his son, saying, Saddle me the ass, and they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. And the lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the prophet took the, up the carcass of the man of Elohim, and laid it upon the ass, and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him, and he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother! And it came to pass after he had buried him that he spake to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulchre wherein the man of Elohim is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. The saying which he cried by the word of Yahweh against the altar in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria, shall surely come to pass. After this thing Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again the lowest of the people priests of the high places. Whosoever would, he consecrated them, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. 1 Kings 14 at that time Abijah the son of Jeroboam fell sick, and Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is Ahijah the prophet, which told me that I should be king over the people. And take with thee ten loaves, and cracknels, and a curse of honey, and go to him, and he shall tell thee what shall become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose, and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. And Yahweh said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say to her, for it shall be when she cometh in, that she shall feign herself to be another woman. And it was so when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, as she came in at the door, that he said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam, why feignest thou thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Go tell Jeroboam, thus saith Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, for as much as I exalted thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and David rent the kingdom away from the house of and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it to thee, and yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart, to do that which was right in mine eyes. But thou hast done evil above all that were before thee. For thou hast gone and made the other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and hast cast me behind thy back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left of in Israel and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam and as a man taketh away dung till it be all gone. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat, for Yahweh hath spoken it. Arise thou, therefore, and get thee to thine own house, and when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him, and bury him, for he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found some good thing toward Yahweh Elohim of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, Yahweh shall raise him up a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what, even now? For Yahweh 
shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves, provoking Yahweh to anger. And he shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who did sin, and who made Israel to sin. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed, and came to Terzah, and when she came to the threshold of the door, the child died. They buried him, and all Israel mourned for him according to the word of Yahweh, which he spake by the hand of his servant Ahijah the prophet. And the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred, and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. The days which Jeroboam reigned were two and twenty years, and he slept with his fathers in Nadab, his son, and Nadab his son reigned in his stead. And Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Ju Judah. Rehoboam was forty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which Yahweh did choose out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nama the Ammonitess. And Judah did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. For they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also Sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of Yahweh, and the treasures of the king's house. He even took away all, and he took away all the shields of gold which Solomon had made. And King Rehoboam made in their stead brass and shields, and committed them unto the hands of the chief of the guard, which kept the door at the king's house. And it was so when the king went into the house of Yahweh, that the guard bare them and brought them back into the guard chamber. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And his mother's name was Nama the Ammonitess, and Abijam his son reigned in his stead. Well, like I said, it doesn't get any, any better from here on out. Actually, it gets worse and worse and worse, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. But uh, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a good evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta, ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him. Have trust in him. Wait upon him. And you'll never. Sorry. We'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with the rest of King. First Kings. So thanks again. See you later.